guys, welcome to the third video, I believe, in the series on my Forex uh, machine learning classification strategy. So in this video, we're going to be continuing on where I left off. And so in the last video, we just did getting data and plotting it. In this video, we're going to be we're going to start to create financial feature functions that we will use as as uh, feature inputs to a machine learning classifier. And a couple of them are as an example you can see here on the bottom now um, these are the total functions that we're going to be doing all of them so we got the momentum stochastic Williams uh, price rate of change and all this other stuff I'm going to go over later um, it's going to take a lot of time so these next couple videos are going to be probably the most time consuming ones that I make because they are the most intensive uh, parts of this whole process. So here's a quick timeline of the next couple of videos. They're all going to take a while, so I've broken them down into into uh, four videos here for you. So on the first one, the first two videos, the third and the fourth one, and we're on the third one now, we're going to be covering some difficult functions. So the Heiken Ashi candles in this video, and the next video we'll do the Fourier and Sign Series fit. In the fifth video, we'll, we will do the Williams accumulation distribution, and that's a kind of challenging one that will lay down the general structure for creating the rest of the functions. In the sixth video, I'll pick up with that general structure, and we will quickly and briefly, I'll do some like fast forward magic, and we'll get through all of the functions. Uh, with that being said, let's dive right into creating the Heikinashi candles. So, the Heikinashi candle is a improved candlestick that attempts to capture more of the momentum uh, apparent in price change so this is what they look like and they're really actually not that hard to create and we can create them from existing uh, OHLC data or open high low close data so these are the equations that we're going to use so you'll see that the Heiken Ashi close is just the average uh, the average bar of the current bar so open high plus low plus close divided by four so that's the average and then the open will be the previous Heikinashi open plus the previous close divided by two so it's it's the average of the Heikinashi the previous Heikinashi open and the Ashi close of the, the previous bar and then these two the Heikinashi high will be the maximum of the current high the current Heikinashi open and the current Heikinashi close and then the low will be the minimum of the current low, the current Heikinashi open and the current Heikinashi close. So one problem that you may see here is that for the the Heikinashi open right here when we go through the first time we don't have the previous Heikinashi open so what do, like, what do we do there because we don't know what it's going to start at um, and the solution that there's a couple different methods you can use but the one we're going to use is we're going to use the, as the first Heikinashi open we're going to use it as the, Heiken, the same Heikinashi close from the first bar and so what will happen is that over because this is an iterative process by which we loop through and go through each current each uh, open high low close piece of data for each piece of time that we have um, so it's iterative, and the Heikinashi open will converge on its actual value um, through time. And it actually converges after like five or six like iterations, so it doesn't matter. We could even start it at zero if we wanted as the first one, but it's a closer approximate to just use the Heikinashi close. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. I'm going to hop over to PyCharm. So the first thing you should do is, we made this in the last video. What I've done here is I've just kind of structured it out. So the first a block here, we loaded up our data, create the moving average. And again, we did this in the previous video. Um, and then in this video, we're going to get our function data. And by the way, this file is called tester, because what we're trying to do is test our financial function that we're creating and plot it. So And then the plot here. So I'm actually going to delete this. So in our last video, we did the candles, the scatter um, of the moving average, and then the bar chart of the volume. In this video, we will do go dot 
OHLC again, but this time for the Heikinashi candles, so we can compare the difference. So if you followed the last video, we should have you should also have all of this um, set up. I just like restructured it to make it better, um, to easier to see. All right, so now go ahead and create a new file called Feature Functions. Um, this is going to be a master file of all of the financial functions that we're going to make that we're going to use to import. So as you can see over here, I have from feature functions import all, which is that asterisk. So we're going to create functions in here that we'll access later via another script. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and import all of the dependencies that we're going to need for this project. Um, and I'm just going to fast forward through this part. Okay guys, so these are all the dependencies we're going to need. Right away you're probably going to notice like why am I optimize or why am I importing this optimize warning in the warnings module? Um, and that's because later on we're going to hit some warnings in some of our functions that we're going to want to continue our script running without letting those warnings hang up uh, our program. So that's why we have those. And then another thing you might notice is that I imported some packages from Matplotlib. And I know I kind of went on a rant about how I don't like Matplot, but in, um, for this, I do. There's some things that I like about it that we're going to use. So, so let's go ahead and get right into it, in, into creating the the candles. So, I'm going to first off, I'm going to create a class, um, and this class is going to be used to create to store our results from each function. And there may be a better way to do this. I'm not super familiar with classes. So we're going to call our class holder, and I'll just put one. So, And then later we'll do something like this. We'll just say results is equal to holder, like that. And then we'll be able to, like, we'll say results dot something is equal to whatever. So that's what we're going to do later. That It's just an easy way for me to store um, attributes into a class without really doing much work with the class itself. Um, I may end up changing this later, but this is just the way I have it set up right now. So moving forward, let's go ahead and, and start. So we're going to do the Heiken Ashi candles. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is just define it. And for the inputs to the function, we're going to put in prices and periods. And here in a second, I'll talk about the format that prices needs to be in, because prices is going to be a pandas data frame that we imported um, in our other function file, uh, which it has it has the OHLC data in the volume. Okay. And the periods. So the periods is going to be a list, so like this format, of the periods that we want to calculate the, the, the candles for. We're not actually going to use the periods in this function, but we're going to pass it through anyway so that we have a way to like collate our data later so we know which time period we're referring to for each function that we're creating. It's kind of hard to explain, but... So next thing I'm going to do is just create um, this right here. You should probably get in the habit of doing this for every function that you write and it just describes what the function does. Okay, so after we have that done, now this just describes what the function, what the purpose is. So let's go ahead and create our results class, or our results object. Oh. Okay, so we have the results object, and we're also going to create an empty dictionary. And we're going to use this dictionary to store uh, our actual candles, and we're going to store the candles in a data frame in the dictionary, and that dictionary gets stored in results. I know it kind of sounds complicated now, but later you'll start you'll start to see the light. So first off, let's initialize HA close. So Heikinashi close. This is going to be equal to prices, and we're just going to get just the OHLC data. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and pull up the formulas. You'll see it somewhere up here on the screen, uh, so you can just have it as a reference. So you'll know that the Heikinashi close for each bar is just the average of the normal bars. So what we'll do is we'll do dot sum and on the on the first on the first axis which is the row axis 
and we'll divide that by four. So that that that's done for that part. Now we'll do the HA. We'll initialize initialize HA open as a copy of HA close. And this is basically my way of creating an empty series that we're gonna we're gonna populate it later. So we're gonna replace all the values in it later. And then let's go ahead and like I said in the PowerPoint, the first HA open, so I location zero, that's how you index the first location. I mean there's other ways, but that's the way I prefer. So we're gonna set the first HA open to the first HA close, like we discussed. Okay? And then we'll do HA high. And we're just going to do that same thing where we initialize it as a copy and we're going to populate later. And then we're going to do the same thing with the low. So now that we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through each row in our prices data frame and we're going to populate our HA open. Our, I'm sorry, yeah, our HA open, our HA high, and our HA low because our HA close is already done. We already have all those values. So what we're going to do is create uh, a loop here. So I for I in range and then one through the length of prices. So that I will start at one. Okay, so then we'll do HA open dot I location I because we already did zero, right? We already did zero. And this is going to be equal to we're looking at the formula here it's going to be equal to the average of the previous open, the Heikinashi open, and the previous close. So HA open dot I location I minus one, so that would be zero. So if we're starting at one, then this would be zero, the zeroth location. Minus, or it's plus, isn't it? Yeah, it's plus. Okay, and then we'll do HA high. And this one is equal to the maximum. So we'll create an array uh, to get the maximum from, to make it easy. And so inside this array, we'll do prices.high.i location i, right? And then ha open dot i location i, the one we just set here. And then the ha close dot i location i okay and then that's all set so that we have an array here and we'll just do the max maximum of that array okay and then we'll be, to make it easier we'll just copy this because this is a similar structure for the ha low so change this to low and then we're going to change this to low as well because it's the same it's just the it's, except this is the minimum now so the minimum between the current low price, current Heikinashi open, the current Heikinashi close. Okay, so that is it for the loop. So after we get out of the loop, let's go ahead and concatenate them into a data frame. So we'll do PD for pandas, that we, in, we imported pandas as PD up here. So concat, which is concatenate, and then we're, we're just going to create a do double parentheses, I forget what the syntax, what that's called, but I think it's called a, like a list or something, or a tuple, that's what it is, it's a tuple. So we'll do, we'll format this the same as OHLC, so O for open, H for high, okay. Outside the tuple, we're going to specify the axis that we want to join these on, and it's the row axis, okay. Next, we're going to rename the columns. And we're going to name them this up here. So let's just go up here and copy this to make it easier. And we're, I'm just doing this as an insurance in case the column names get changed in the process. So after we rename the columns, I'm going to put an optional thing in here that sometimes we might need and we might not need it. Sometimes there's an issue with the data frame index depending on the method by or the format of our prices data frame that we're using as, a, as an input up here. So depending on the format, 
later on we may decide to change the format we may need this line but we're just going to comment it out for now because we're not going to need it so we're going to do drop level zero and we can I'll explain that later if if and when we need it okay so now that we have this dictionary let's go ahead and create the dict and then for periods zero so because we're only passing one period and I'll explain why I format it like this later for right now um, just kind of just do it anyway or find your own way of format formatting them but there's a way later by which I loop through and kind of organize all the features and this part is essential to that and then we'll do results dot candles now I'm just naming it the attribute candles and then we'll pass the dict into that and then we will return the results holder okay so that should be it I'm just gonna go ahead and look through here make sure everything is good um, for some reason I don't know why these, it's highlighting these as yellow but it should be alright so next I'm gonna go over here to our tester and you're gonna want to import the feature functions file or whatever you decide to name it you're gonna import all from there so we're gonna go down here to this block where I separated out get function data and let's just say ha results is equal to Heikenashi and we're gonna pass in the data frame and the periods for the periods we're just gonna do one so one hour period is what we're calculating for and then we can just put ha is equal to ha results dot candles because that's what we named it inside here and for that candles and we're gonna access the first one because it's a dictionary so we can index it using the name or using that key and that key is is the period number okay so now that we have the candles we've created a data frame here called HA from those candles that we got so let's go down here and let's plot it so for trace 3 we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing that we did for trace 0 so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this whole thing and there we go it's ready to go I'm just gonna rename this though Ikenashi. And this is trace two. Don't forget. Alright, so that being done, let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. See if we hang up on any errors. If not, it should just go ahead and open the plot. Okay, uh, let's see here. Okay, guys, I realized the error here, and I think that it's that we have too many parentheses. I don't know what I was doing here. <laughs> So you should only have two, you only need two to index um, a data frame by the column names. So I think that being changed up, we'll just run it again and it should be okay. There we go. So it's going to automatically pull open our nice plotly plot. Alrighty, so another thing I want to show you guys that I did here is that in the tester I only I indexed the data frame to be only the first 200 values and I did that so that we could see the the candles better so here we go here are our normal open high low close candles that are kinda of sporadic you know you can't, it does, you can't really follow what's happening I mean you can follow what's happening but with Heikenashi candles it's kinda of easier to see um, the momentum in the market so these are the these are the new candles that we just generated here. So as you can see, um, like on a on a on a upward push or a downward push, like this one where we have several green ones, where reflecting kind of like the noise in the signal. This one does not have that noise. So it kind of it's a kind of a momentum filter. I'm not an expert in finance. I just I like these candles. So, um, so that's going to conclude the, the third video. In the next video, we're going to go through and we're going to create our Fourier and Sign series expansion fits or Fourier series fit um, of a data series. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, stick around. It's going to get interesting.